I've spent the last three days up north in the farthest point of Scotland, in Terzo, uh, on a field trip, um, checking the new, the new sites for our base stations. I'll show you some pictures, and I have a video. I don't know if we have audio. Uh, the audio will just give you wind, because that's how bad the conditions were up there. So, um, so who am I? Um, I've been an um, electronics designer for 15 plus years. I've done many things uh, between digital processors, animal power. And um, since I started working with sensors, radio, and trying to put things on the internet, going back from 2009, I've always tried to do everything very low power. At the time, maybe before a bit, a bit before that, people were, were much interested in, in going low power because we have big batteries, but now everything is, uh, everything is portable. Everyone wants the batteries to last 10 years. And uh, that, that got, uh, got interested in that. So past lives, I've, I've built robot <coughs> vacuum cleaners, smart meters, and I was also a lecturer, done many things. Uh, for those that are on radio operators, I am Charlie Tango 2 Golf Papa Whiskey. We can talk at the end about this. <laughs> so, I've come from University of St. Andrews. Um, there's a, a research unit called CMAMO Research Unit. And so, who is and what does the CMAMO Research Unit do? So, it was established uh, in 78 by NERC the Natural Environment Research Council. And the SMRU has 40 people between uh, academics, researchers, and student staff. And mainly, it's marine biology research. Um, I was in Cambridge, uh, 96 moved to St. Andrews. Uh, it's part of the Scottish Oceans Institute that is part of the University of St. Andrews. It's an independent, independent research group, so um, part of NERC and supplies advice to, you, to the UK government on all things marine. Okay, so, yeah, last year, 2000, say late 2015, early 2016, we established a partnership, a strategic partnership with Vodafone UK for the M2M. And you understand, you will understand why M to M, machine to machine. Um, after I show you uh, what we do at the instrumentation group. So the instrumentation group is a group of ten people. We have thirty years experience designing uh, electronics. Uh, we design, build, test, and commission tags. You've seen that seal, that picture of the seal with uh, with an antenna on the head. I will show you what what that is. So we design. Hardware, firmware, software, mechanical, we do the assembly, encapsulation, potting, and we do the field test. So from the initial idea until we send the tags to the researchers to the field, that will go everywhere, everywhere on earth and seas, we do it. We're not the only ones, but we are very well positioned when we are working in a niche environment and we are top of the group. Uh, as I said, tags work on all continents and sea. We are proud of that, um, and we can corroborate this. Our tags withstand from minus 25 to 40 degrees. Remember, if they work on, in the, on the tropics, we are talking about 40. If they work in the, in the poles, uh, when the animals are out of the water, we have to withstand at least minus 25 degrees. 200 bar, and that's 2,000 meters depth. The tags have to withstand that pressure because some of the animals, some seals, some whales go at that depth, to that depth. And of course, between three to 12 months operation, some of the tags sometimes uh, work on a multi-year, special for turtles if we have solar charging on our tags. 
uh, between three to 12 months and it depends on how many points per day or per week or per month you want, if you want acceleration data, if you want GPS data. So the more points, the more information you want, the less battery you will have because you have to transmit more power or you have to log more times, more frequently. Okay, so what kind of technology do, you, do we use? We use extremely low power digital and analog electronics. Everything is designed by us in-house. Um, for transmitting the data, we use GSM GPRS. We use Argo satellite. I'm sorry, can you see this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, back there. Okay, thank you. We use Argo satellite. Argo satellite is a network of I'm not mistaken, six or seven birds flying uh, above, above the Earth um, in 401 megahertz. Um, you have Argos 2 that is only a beacon, only for transmission, and you have Argos 3 that you have a transmission and you have between one to three seconds uh, a reception, like a mailbox. So we work with both. We have. Uh, UHF propriety, and now we are using LoRa, and I mean LoRa and not LoRa One. Okay, that's that's a that's a big difference. And we are prototyping already. We narrow band IoT, um, and we've been sponsored with uh, on these by Vodafone, and we are prototyping also with Iridium, so we can uh, have. Oops, I'm sorry. We have. Um, a bigger bandwidth uh, than Argos because with Argos satellite we can transmit 32 bytes every three minutes and, and most of the time the satellite doesn't see it because it has only a 10% efficiency. So we are talking about a six or seven birds flowing and you have to be really lucky that your transmission gets to that satellite. So 10% efficiency. Uh, but very low power though, it's very, very low power. Iridium, iridium it's high power, high bandwidth, so as a trade-off. Depends on the work you want to do. Some work you can withstand the power, uh, other work you, you cannot, so it depends. Uh, we have solar energy and battery charging with very low power um, solar cells and uh, very low power circuitry. We use fast lock geolocation and fast lock it's not a GPS. GPS, as you know it, it takes some time to grab a position, a few seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, one minute, and that is a lot of power. It's always in constant uh, grabbing. Fast lock reads the sky for 50 milliseconds and then post process all data for 12, 15 seconds and gives you how many satellites are there in the sky and gives you the strength of each satellite. Then you transmit that to the, to the server, and then uh, on the server we calculate where the animal was. So instead of spending several seconds with a lot of, with a lot of power being um, wasted, because for, for us it's wasted, we spend 50 milliseconds of high power receiving the radio, and then post-processing with DSP and FPGA on board uh, all the data. Also, we have conductivity, temperature, and depth me measurements, and high precision definition and repetitivity. We have also fluorometry and tags, high precision light meters, down to the number of electrons. Yes, we can calculate the number of electrons. At two kilometers depth, the number of electrons can be counted. And for that, we use a kind of light sensor uh, built from a Japanese company, Hamamatsu. It's the best light sensors that are on the market, and we calibrate, it, we calibrate them in-house, and uh, we can give you the number of electrons for, on that time frame. Some researchers want that, because at two kilometers depth, you don't have any light for us, but some animals can detect the photons. Other sensors that are here are accelerometers, uh, gyroscopes, and magnetometers. We use all that too. Okay, so what you see here, it's an old generation tag, 
built with an 8-bit processor, still an old design from the 80s. These, these types, we're still shipping them and selling them until we finish our new generation. Um, with, the note, with this processor, I think it was an Itachi Renesis processor, we can't do much in terms of sleeping. If you want to do something, uh, the CPU has to be awakened, that means power wastage, and even for a small job as counting timers, everything needs to be awake. That's a very power wastage. So, in a sleep mode, we waste around 10 microamps. You say 10 microamps is nothing, but for us, we can fly to the moon with 10 microamps. It's a lot, it's a lot of power. Because uh, remember that these tags need to be sleep, need to be asleep all the time. Once in a while, seconds or minutes, tag wakes up for real-time clock or for a transmission or for a sensor grabbing. So the average needs to be much lower than this. And the leakage, the leakage of these circuits, it's, since this is a, an old circuitry, the leakage is very, very high in terms of the components used, because they are all components, uh, too much capacity on the board, so there's a lot of leakage. Uh, new generation. Uh, I'll show you later, uh, the next slide, a comparison between both tags, so you can see the, 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 the differences. Uh, we're using now a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 with DSP instructions, so most of the things that we were using, uh, the older tags that took seconds to do, now we do it in a fraction of a second. Um, the good thing about the, this new technology is that all the peripherals inside the, CPU, the, the, the processor can work while the CPU is sleeping, so everyone can exchange data, work, stop, start, stop, start, stop, exchange data, and the CPU is asleep and is stopped. And that means great power savings, because if the CPU is stopped, uh, there is no extra power wastage. Uh, we have an average between 20 to 50 nanoamp sleeping if we shut down everything on the board. And our main consumption is below one microamp, including the leakages and everything. But we need to shut down everything on the board except the processor running a uh, real-time clock. Okay, so you see the differences between the old and the new, um, it's more than twice the reduction in size. There is always a trade-off between the size of the battery and, of course, the longevity of your tag. If you want a tag to last between 9 to 12 months, there is no choice. You have to choose a, diff uh, a, um, a larger battery. If you want a tag that will give you information for between one to three months, you can go on a very short, uh, sorry, sorry, very smaller battery, but still you don't have the no longevity. So it's, a, it's always a trade-off. Uh, looking at the technology inside, that's the old board, that's the new board. If we rotate this board 90 degrees clockwise, it's more or less three times uh, one third of the size, I'm sorry. And there's still a lot of space there. And you can also change the design. There's a, a GSM GPRS modems and all, many connectors for other sensors. Roughly how big is that, just in terms of scale? Um, yeah, that I should have put a coin there. <laughs> uh, we're talking about 3 centimeters by 6 centimeters. Okay. It's still small but large. For some animals, it's still large because if you add the battery, there's, there's a bigger size there. But play mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of IoT, Internet of Things, um, we start developing with LoRa in late 2015. Uh, we've, done, we've done our first field tests in February 2016, that was a year ago, and the first tests were very successful. 
uh, we tested, we went to the market and grabbed the modules that were available, connected to our tags, built the base station, put the antennas on the roof, we then all that. So, um, we got 99% packet delivery uh, over 12 kilometers and near line of sight. And when I mean, mean near line of sight is that the receiving station was blocked by tall buildings and that was it. After those tall buildings there was there, there is a big, there is, I don't know if you know, um, San Andreas, uh, it's called West Sands, it's a very large bay, really shallow, there's nothing in, in, in between. So, with the power that the module gave, gave us, 14 dBm or 35 milliwatts, we got a 90% packet delivery and it was, um, we confirmed it because we always put the tags on, on, the, on the sun, that's our test because the animals when they haul out on the beach, they are always on, on the sun, they are not standing like us, they are lying down, so we had to put everything on the sun and do the testings. We tested several antennas, PCB patches, PCB um, copper ducts or vertical antennas small and even with that antenna and that is one centimeter by two centimeters we got 99% packet delivery and we're talking an antenna that it's a negative gain okay uh, the base station has a very good antenna plus 11 dBi Okay, and it's the building, uh, the roof of the building is at around 20 meters above the sea level. It's not optimum, especially because you can see here the roof. The antenna is really close to the roof. The roof is metallic, so there, there's still a bit of a loss. And these were the tests one year ago. That's, that's me holding the, you know, everything with wires. And it was working. So, after these first tests, we, all, we went on and built uh, a real system. So, that's San Andrews here. The, our institute is here on the beach. And we got, we went to Tensmute Beach at the time. And we got around 12 kilometers near line of sight from one point to the other. Okay, so. What's been doing? What's been uh, done now? We have better testings uh, since last year, and we will have uh, another group of better testings in April uh, 2017. I've been up north, as I told you, um, checking checking the sites for the new base stations. Uh, there's a new tag design being launched and being put on on, on the seals. Um, have a, it has been designed centered just on LoRa, okay, so we decided that we wanted to use LoRa for our uh, UHF tags and we designed the tag, I designed the tag around that, that concept. Um, and this is all to prove that the base station is uh, up to the task, that the tags are up to the task, and so we can release version number one. It's still everything better, but it's, it's still working. So, new tag. Uh, some of you probably, if you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, have already seen this photo. This is the same size, 3 centimeters by 6 centimeters, as our arm cortex. Uh, our arm cortex with DSP instructions. Uh, one gigabit flash memory to log um, all the information from GPS and sensors, if it cannot talk with the base station. Some, of, some animals spend a few days at sea away from the base station, so they need to save all, all data. That data is really important to the, to the researchers. Uh, our lot of radio, we chose a module uh, on the market um, for this attempt and to, to, to test of the, the lot of system. Revision number one will have the chips and the chips, uh, the radio chips, and not the, the module for convenience. It also has a fast lock geograbber kind, kind of GPS. 
It has also a conductivity, temperature and depth sensor with an extra depth sensor. Wet dry sensors are sensors that detect when the animal is in and out of the water. So it's important that we transmit only when the animal is uh, out of the water. And this has a lot of power conditioning circuitry and also circuitry to disconnect everything that is not needed on the board. So when the animal goes into the water, we can disconnect all the radios, all the sensors that are wasted power. So everything is off. And there's also a magnetic switch because everything will be encapsulated in epoxy. There are no electrical connections, no buttons, nothing. So using a magnet, we give controls to the tag, switch on, switch off. Um, combinations of switches, of magnets, we can do some programming. So that's one of the ways we, we found that works. So that's, that's the base station where it is now operating in East Sands in San Andrews. It's been there since February last year. Uh, working well. That's part of the of the of the PCB inside for the people that like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's also an ARM Cortex M4. Has SD card for logging all all the tags that connect with it. Uh, the LoRa radio is the same radio that's on the tags. So full compatibility. Um, It has GSM and G GPRS to talk with our servers directly, so when there are enough um, tags, I mean, when, when enough tags have talked to the, to the, to the base station and we have uh, an amount of data, there's a connection by GPRS, FTP, or HTTP post to our servers, download data. Also power conditioning and power switches for everything on the board. Uh, it has mains power, it can be powered by mains, it can be powered by solar panel, it can be powered by battery, and the solar panel and the mains charge the batteries. It has USB uh, connections for a console outside or for downloading data. There's a user interface with LCD buttons for if, for if the researcher goes on the field, opens the, opens the, opens the box presses the button, see what, what's going on, you can see traffic, you can see all the tags that are talking. You can take the SD card, substitute the SD card, or just press the button and send all the information that it's still on the SD card back to the server. Future development for revision to add Ethernet, Ethereum, and make it portable. It's already mobile. It's not portable, it's mobile, because you have tripods, and that's not much, much portable because you know, it's still weight. So these photos were taken two days ago. You, so you, you can see where we use our stuff. That's first generation base station. That's one of my colleagues. And that's there. Top northwest point two days ago before the storm. <laughs> so today is the 23rd. Yesterday, 22nd, we went back to the, to the sites again and we couldn't walk. We, some, um, twice we had to lie on the floor because the wind was so strong. That, yeah. Any questions?